And welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining me as I explore the amazing, incredible, unbelievable, diverse wide world of pens. And here are five pens in front of you. Those that may have watched my Timu video may recognize them. Yes, these are five Lamy like, Safari like pens that I bought for a little over a dollar a piece. Here's the listing on Timu. I'm blown away. They're extremely well made. I love the color combinations. I'm not aware of any other pen that looks like this having the incredible variety of colors that these have. The range is phenomenal. You got a silver and black. I mean, oh, say no more. Let's look at how it looks when they're posted. So here they are posted, and I'm just blown away with the color variations and the section itself. You know, I'm certain it's some type of automated coding system that applies this coloring to whatever the base is. And they don't post all to the same depth. All of these caps fit very, very tightly, which I think is good because over time, generally a snap-on cap kind of loosens up a little bit. So you like them to be tight in the very beginning. So be prepared if you do investigate these pens for yourself. But dude, those colors are unbelievable. And it's a matte finish, except for the black and silver one, which is kind of glossy. So it has a different feel than the other ones do. But I like that incredible range of colors that you get with these pens. So this is not a nib for me. It's almost like a needle point. Incredibly fine line. It's called an extra fine nib, but it's more like an extra extra fine. It doesn't lay down much ink, but it does put down a consistent line. And the nib does stay wet. Been a while making this video, so I've had the pen cap for a week and I took off the cap and it wrote first time. And continued to write consistently. Kudos for that, but this is not a nib I enjoy. Lots of feedback. Doesn't feel good on paper, but it certainly lays down a very, very fine line for those that enjoy that. The nib in these pens is really, really extra fine. Yeah, who knows whether I'm going to like it or not. But, thankfully, I have some extra feeds. And I have this great calligraphy nib, which I put in a Jinhao 35. I like the way that it wrote. So I think this may find itself into one of these pens. We'll see how the writing sample goes. But the feeds are totally interchangeable. I have yet to pull a nib off of the feed of these uh, Chinese pens, and it's not something I'm going to be doing, because I have extra feeds, so I'll use those. Well, I've kind of disassembled the pen, just to show you some of the bits and pieces that are here. Yeah. It's a standard feed with that Lamy style nib with the wings that slip on and off. So, easy to swap nibs if that's what you'd like to do. Section is just one piece of injection molded plastic with those interesting colors on it. Barrel, cap. And this is a low end converter in my view of converters. It's a push pull converter which I'm not a fan of because I find them hard to control. There's a ball in it. But if you look at the opening, you can compare it to two other converters, which do fit well. And you may say, what are these? Well, one's a Lamy and one's out of a Pen BBS, I think. I have a lot of converters laying around, so it's easy for me to upgrade the converter which I will do. So you may ask, uh, how did these other converters work out? And I'll say, they didn't. So I'm not certain exactly what the issue is. They seem to fit okay, but maybe that was the outside diameter, but not the inside diameter. 
So I use the push-pull converters. I can't even get a solid fill with these, but it's enough of a fill to do some inks, sample writing, and I do have that calligraphy nib in the pen. Same ink as the extra fine, so we'll get to compare. Same ink, same pen, different nib. Stay tuned. So one thing that's interesting about the design of this section is there's those two kind of like rails in there which correspond to these two slits on the back of the feed. So the feed only fits in one way. So it lines up well with the way that contoured section, which if you follow my channel you know I'm not a fan of, but hey, for the price of the pen, I'm willing to live with it will you? It looks like the silver and gold one has a little bit of a different resin that they've coated, but all of them have a interesting liner there at the very top, and that's where this snap works, and it seals up the nib. I expect the nibs shall stay wet. Then you'll notice how that ink window is there, and it really lines up well, so if you don't tighten it all the way, you get to see it, but when you tighten it, things work very well together. Nicely done. <laughs> can't help getting over those color variations and I can't imagine sitting in a room and figuring out what colors we're going to use for these pens. I'm not going to try a safe ink. I'm obviously going to put this Trimmel pink ink with some pink glitter in it into this extra fine nib. Here's what it looks like on the paper towel as I wiped off the top of the jar and also the nib. So if you've seen my uh, Chinese ink sample here and I use number 12, no I use number 10. I think this is the most pink of these inks that I have and all of these have some glitter in them. So you may ask how the calligraphy nib works. Well here's a little illustration showing the calligraphy nib up here and that extra fine nib down here. Both of them are dry writers. find the color variation very interesting. As you can see, it's a much wider line. So now it's time for a wrap-up, some editorial comments, and a final writing sample. As you probably have guessed, I'm not a fan of how these write. I mean, they're, you know, the same dimensions, size, and shape as Alami Safari, which is a tried and true design. It's been around for a long, long time. Without change, I must admit. I do love the colors. I love what the manufacturer did in regards to making these stand out. But nibs are not what I expected. I opened up feeds. I cleaned them. I did everything I normally would do. I did not do any grinding or smoothing on the nibs, but it's just not a fan. You know, I've not been a fan of Lamy Safaris. I don't like the grip. I don't like the size. So I tried to like these, but they didn't make the grade for me. So with that, you know, you can get a fine nib on Timu. So I wanted extra fine, I got it, and now I regret that. Sometimes that happens. Gee, for the under $5 that I spent for six pens, I can afford to, to make a mistake occasionally. And I do have more nibs I could put in these to possibly improve the writing performance, but yeah, don't know whether that's worth the effort. Let me know in the comments what you think about the pen, the design, and whether you'd be interested in it. Well, I think you heard at least a calligraphy nib is smoother than the extra fine. But 
Yeah. I think I used two different inks. So, I apologize for that, but they're both Timo inks. This one is definitely more red, this one is definitely more pink. But, they're the same type of ink, so this, the way they look and the way they write would be the same, even if they were the same color, in which they're not. I've reached the end of this video, so we will write the end. I hope everyone is doing well. And I hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, putting some ink down. Who knows what you might find attracts your attention. Might make a good drawing pen for those that like that extra fine nib, but not for me. So again, thank you for watching. And we will say bye. At least it's a consistent writer.